good day everyone and welcome to my channel today i'm going to be talking about ogu i want to be talking about the different aspects the different interpretations of ogu and how it relates to ordinary and omenane according to the Igbo cosmology so if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and let's have this conversation so i don't know um if you know this but the major difference between ordinary and omenane is the existence of ogu in ordinary we know that ogu is not part of our natural principle now when i'm talking about natural principle i'm talking about the acknowledgement of a person's chi and his mezu. now chi becomes an individual's creator a way through which an individual can connect to the cosmos now the Ezumezu aspects of it includes an, a person's ancestral spirits or ancestors which we refer to as Ndichi a person's marine marine entity or marine spirit which you call Ndin Mary your spiritual spouse whether it's coming from the water or it's coming from any other natural element all those kinds of entities or spirits that are that together work for an individuals are things we consider as a person's Chi and Ezumezu now in ordinary what we believe is the acknowledgement of the existence of this ancestral or familiar spirit in Igbo language we call it more so madawebiowa more so chi madawebiowa more or ndi nyana ginaha so webiowa this is how we basically look at it so this is what ordinary truly means now within the cultural practices of ndi Igbo we know that we have the existence of ogu ogu in the sense that Igbo people believe in something that we refer to as amansi or emaka in especially Especially in masquerade festivals where we see masquerades using ogu to basically enter into an arena enable to allow them to or to enable them perform better or to enable them to perform more than the next masquerade also the reasons why they also take on this ogu and inculcate it into the masquerade courts is because some of this masquerade masquerades thrive by prestige each of those masquerades can be can go into an arena and they can be tempted or dragged with a, a particular kind of a ogu or charm but if these kinds of masquerade are able to withstand the effect or the influence of those charms that are being thrown at them then they are creating some kind of prestige an example of this kind of a masquerade that Igbo people actually look at is like inside the ajofia in the navy these are the kinds of masquerades that actually go into these kinds of arena with you know some kind of a protective charm against other masquerades or against other forces so this is the two difference between ordinary and omenani in ordinary what we're trying to talk about here is the belief in the natural principle of chi and izumizu but what we're now looking at the cultural practices of undibu we can see the existence of ogu into inculcated into these cultural practices as a way to basically entertain or basically you know as as some kind of a protection but at the end of the day is it is it all is the major difference between ordinary and omenani now our ancestors actually looked at ogu or they perceived our ogu as a man-made configuration that is exercised through the mixture of herbs the mixture of a life force on one and other means this process of configuring ogu is also viewed to follow a specific process of repetition experimentation and testing then in Igbo language you call this process made e wogu or made iswate so what these things means is that since ogu is not really a natural principle because how the process through the, the, the how the Igbo kind of address this natural principle is through sacrifices through rituals or through rites this is how we communicate with these natural principles but when we're trying to interact with ogu it's a configuration in the sense that it is something that is mixed by hand it's something where is a, is a system whereby the Dibia or the spiritualist that knows the principles of this Ogu can bring in two distinct herbs because this Dibia is aware of their characteristics or what those kinds of Ogu, those kinds of herbs can actually do. Now, the intention towards that Ogu could basically mean to manifest wealth. Now, there are herbs that in the Igbo people know that the function that this herb, when you apply it in the right circumstances, when you apply it under some certain principles, it's going to draw or attract or manifest wealth for a person so when they are bringing in this these two herbs they're also adding other items that's why it's a mixture it's a concussion 
of two or three or four more herbs. Now, in Igbo principle or with the principle of Ogun, there is nothing in Igbo does without channeling and or energizing that entity or that configuration. And one of the means through which Ndi will energize a configuration is through channeling a life force, which is a system where we basically kill an animal, then use its essence, its energy to channel that configuration. Now, another aspect of configuring Ogu is Onoato. Onoato in the sense that the potent mouth of the Dibia. Because in Igbo cosmology, believe not Ono Kachuku Juwe Kowa. God created this earth, this world, by just his spoken words. Because we believe in that principle, we also believe that Ono Dibia Bono Chuku, the Dibia's mouth is also the mouth of, of God. That's why we also believe that. Believe that. Oku Oku Ikbazu Adebe No Nu Ofeke. Ono Nu Dibia Konal. So this is where the onoato principle comes. Then the onoato principle can also be be fixed through the channeling of that configuration before a deity, because our people will tell you that the charm and the deity works hand in hand. Another thing here is that the other principles or the other means here includes that the, the configuration of Ogu might not necessarily come with the aspect of herbs. It can actually manifest through other means. You can actually use a, a, a lifeless stone, a certain kind of tree, a certain kind of dead animal to basically configure a charm. Now, another explanation of Ogu is the ancestral belief that Ogu is a scientific configuration which means that these kinds of ogu passed through a scientific method scientific method of repetition scientific method of experimenting or testing and the scientific process of modification so this means that literally the processes of configurating an ogu or you know an ogu is something that is being passed down from generations to generation is something that the descendants of dibias are being socialized into they are being socialized to basically know how these things work so by knowing how all those things work they are basically experimenting with modifying and repeating that process over and over and over again now in Igbo language you call this process a wall the process of configuring a charm the process of configuring juju or charms or you know it's called or ogu is called iguogu or isu atikwa like I said, the principle of Ogo is only being taught or socialized into the family or the lineage of Dibias. These are the only people that they pass down this, this, uh, the, the principles or the knowledge of Ogo. Now, there are some people they are referred to as Ofeke, which are the non-initiate and people that don't really come out from the family of initiates that could decide to pick interest in this noble institution of Dibiaship. Now, these kinds of people will look at them going to go and learn, you know, go and study the, pr the principles of these kinds of ogwood or the principles of natural principle. We call them ebosawu, people that leave their house, leave what their family is known for, and go to another family to basically learn, you know, everything that is associated with ogwood, everything associated with ogwood and the rest of them. Now, unfortunately, um, these kinds of uh, knowledge or these kinds of uh, interpretations of Ogo or some of the concepts that we have in Igbo spirituality, Igbo cosmology has now been vilified thanks to the existence of a uh, Western religion, Western influence. So all these kinds of things has been vilified. Now the word Ogo on its own has been so vilified that an individual can basically not um, think of Ogo to mean something other than and a charm or other than something that is supposed to you know to to, to fight an, another individual now the word ogo on its own exists just as it is the word power exists just as it is the word knowledge exists just as it is now the the aspects where this ogo or this um knowledge or power is being channeled to depends on the human interaction who or which individual is tapping into this repository of knowledge? Who or what individual is trap tapping into this power? And who or what individual is configuring these kinds of ogo? It now determines whether these kinds of ogo can be used for good or if the ogo can be used 
to be you know to be malevolent against other individuals to differentiate this concept of ogo our ancestors actually gave it other names such as ajogu or ogwike to illustrate the context of this ogo and, and which kinds of ogo should be associated with vileness now because our ancestors understood that these kinds of ajogu or ogwike has the capacity to be extremely volatile that's why they, they associated us from these kinds of organ. They understood that this organ has its capacity to grow in its own consciousness, just like the AI. That's why sometimes when we try to talk about organ, we refer to organ as an artificial intelligence, something that does not exist within the natural principles of nature, but something that can grow its own consciousness when applied. And because of its volatile nature, it's not something that you can 100% understand. It's not something that you can 100% control. And it's not something you can understand. You can easily discard. To understand the, the growth of, you know, these kinds of ogre, you know, them getting consciousness. Now, our ancestors understood that at the point of configuring an ajogo or an ogwike, the officiant, which is the dibia or the SMO, may instruct this ogre to basically perform a certain function. Now, its function could be manifest or attract wealth. Its function could be be for protection its function could be any other thing it can be in this world but because of it you have to give it something in exchange now the exchange is always limited to you offering it a reward of a livestock so in this situation the people can actually promise these kinds of uh, or promise them to yearly annually or monthly offer a particular kind of sacrifice a particular kind of sacrifice as an offering to them but because this ogre has its capacity to grow its own consciousness the ogre could basically become superior it could become a superior framework that would now rise against the person that instituted or initiated it now at this point this particular org would would kind of uh, would exist and perform functions more than it should it should actually perform or perform functions that is not under its a uh, restriction or under its purview under what the org is supposed to do and at this point it's now um, performing outside the initial constraints outside what the intended purpose and once this ongo starts to perform outside its intended purpose what happens here is that it is going to demand a higher reward now a higher reward could be something an individual could not necessarily give or necessarily provide and at this point this um, artificial intelligence ongo will start to get or take or forcefully take these rewards without the consent of the initiates or the officiants. This realization becomes one of the reasons why our ancestors limit the application of ogwo principles in our spiritual practices, except, except when there is an absolute need for a community to truly configure a PowerPoint, to truly configure a, an artificial intelligence so what these things mean is that we keep telling people that there is a difference between ordinary and omenani and we tell people that, um, that um, omenani is always um, related to ogu, while ordinary is related to the natural principles now this is the only reason why our ancestors saw that ogu can actually grow its own consciousness and when an ogu grows its own consciousness even the libya that instituted it might not necessarily be equipped to handle the effect or the consequences of such ogu when it grows its own consciousness now it's just like you know most of these sci-fi movies that we watch about a, a creator a scientist inventing inventing a particular robot or inventing some kind of a uh, robot or some kind of a uh, AI technology and once that is done we see that at some point in the future or at some point these kinds of uh, you know inventions the human con aspect of it the human in interpreter interpreter there would lose 
you know track or lose hold of its own invention and when that happens this ai has grown their unconsciousness and they would no longer want the the effect or the influence of this human factor they want to be on their own and it becomes a problem this is the same thing that Ogo actually does and this is one of the reasons why our ancestors do not want us to associate Ogo into ordinary now this is just one aspect of the interpretations of Ogo now some other people will look at why am I saying that Ogo is necessarily a good thing now we need to understand that when when a herbalist gives or you go meet a herbalist and the herbalist provides you with a certain kind of herb we need to understand that the word for that herb at that given context is called ogu so if we necessarily link the the concept of ogu the the whole interpretations of ogu and reduce it to merely just in being aspect of ogwike or being an aspect of uh, a job then we forget that there is also the good aspect of ogu and <laughs> ogu can actually be, be used in this contest as something that is given to a person to safeguard another person's life or to basically improve the generations to come or basically for something basically um benevolent and not benevolent so these are the different interpretations and different inter interactions of ogu and reasons why our ancestors decided that ordinary is to, to practice ordinary is to follow the natural principles unless there is an extreme need for you or a community to basically delve into the application or the usage of ogu which can only be handled by professionals by people that know how to institute it and people that know how to dissolve that kinds of powerpoints now because the need has been produced that we have to institute we have to configure this particular ogu because of this certain purpose or certain intention now nature can basically permit it for instance during the time of war during the time of you know bloodshed nature permits the usage usage of odish because it's a kind of charm that is being addressed towards the protection of human lives now these are the only certain the only certainty or the only reasons of why nature can actually permit us to institute or to use these kinds of organ now there are other ones it depends on you and it depends on the intentions towards the institution or the configuration of that particular organ but any other thing which comes in form of selfish reason to manipulate nature to basically use those principles to you know fight another individual at some point you're going to lose track you're going to lose hold of that configuration and that and only that becomes a problem so i'm going to stop this video here and if you gained any value from watching this video um don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also don't forget to comment and subscribe to this channel and until next time yeah